Hiya and welcome to Build. I'm Daniel Welsh and today we are live from London with Norwegian singer-songwriter Aurora. Hello. Hello. Uh, if you've got a question for Aurora, then don't hesitate to get in touch. We are on Twitter at Build Series LDN. That's Build Series LDN on Twitter. Or if you're watching live on Facebook, then put a comment in the video that you're currently watching and we'll do our best to get that to Aurora before the end of the interview. Aurora, hello. Welcome to Build. Thank you. I'm so happy you're here. So we're here to talk about your new single, Queendom, the mm -hmm. imaginatively titled Queendom. Uh, what can you tell us about the song? Um, well, it's just the beginning to this new ch chapter we've, uh, we're heading into of, of my, uh, my book of life. <laughs> and it's, um, it's meant to be just a celebration of us and how different we are, but also equal, you know. And about it's about women, of course, mm -hmm. men also, and animals and children and the earth, just everything that's um, alive. Mm -hmm. Well, the lyrics are the, the real feeling of kind of togetherness and community about it. What inspired you to write the song? Um, well, it was after, um, because I... In 2016 and 17, I've I met many, many, many of my of my listeners, my 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 family, mm -hmm. um, and it was just it was interesting to see like how far we 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 stretch, you know, from England to Brazil to you know the States and Australia, and it was just um, and I and I realized how how many of us that have experienced a bit of the same things as I have. You know, outsiders, a bit of strange. You know, we are, we are strange, aren't we? We are, we are a bit weird. And um, I wanted Queendom to be um, this safe place for that's, us. That's really interesting. So when you were writing the first album, um, I guess you weren't really thinking about the people who would be listening to it at the end. No. So, so what was what was it like meeting all of these people while you were promoting that album and you know like you say kind of getting to know people and getting to get a sense of community is with your okay? fans? Sorry? Is this okay to Oh have yeah, get yourself comfortable. We're here okay. for a while. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what, sorry. So what was that like getting to know? <laughs> <laughs> what was that like kind of getting to know people? Was that like surprising to you kind of hearing um, everyone's experiences? No. It's just lovely. I love hearing about you know all the stories and the different. You know we we are so um, deep, mm -hmm. and normally when you meet people, you're only allowed, you know, to see the first layer, maybe the second, of that person. And I'm so lucky to be able to meet people and go straight to like the, the inner, inner things they have in their hearts. It's so special, and it's such a beautiful way to meet humans. Yeah, it, it makes you. Love them. Us. I mean, I'm also human, of course. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that sounded very external. <laughs> um, obviously, the title is Queendom, and you mentioned that it's a song for everyone. But when you hear Queendom, obviously, you think women and you think female solidarity. Mm. Is that something that was important to you when yeah, you were course. creating I'm the a, song? I'm a woman, mm -hmm. so it's, it's personal to me. Everything that happens against women all over the world, I kind of take personally yeah. because it's... Uh, it's a, uh, it's it's sad. Yeah. You know, but also queendom. It's very important for me that everyone knows that it's, you know, it's not only for women. It's just a way to kind of say my, you know, it's a title to my world. If I was to rule uh, a universe, it wouldn't be a kingdom because I I don't have a penis. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it here first, people. <laughs> Um, you mentioned the kind of the, the mistreatment of women and the sad things that are happening, but also Queendom, the track, it is a celebration. Mm -hmm. Was that also important to be like, listen, th there are bad things, but we need to kind of rise above it and celebrate as well? Yes, because I don't really think it really reaches us the same way, because we, I, I don't think we like being told, like, you need to care more about this, you know, as a, an above and, and down, yeah. you know, that, oh, you know, we need to be better at this and that and to care more and you know that happens all the time to us though we get to you know read and yeah. about things we we're not doing enough for so it's just nice to kind of say it to 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 care about things in a in a fun in a fun way yeah where we kind of 
focus on the things that we we can um, love instead of as you know the the beautiful line in the newest Star Wars movie to fight for what you love and not against what you hate. I yeah. really love that. A bit cheesy, but I loved it. No, I think that that's totally true. Like <laughs> with especially right now with everything that's going on in the world. Yes. If you go on social media, it's just a deluge of just negativity. Mm -hmm. So it is nice to kind of be able to hear like an important message that is put to you in a kind of joyful way. Yeah, because it is it is just love. And I can't really see love being pro projected in a negative way. Mm -hmm. Vasco Slays on Twitter, fabulous Ooh. name. <laughs> um, like he it. says, you were talking about if you were to rule, if you were to have your own queendom. Mm -hmm. um, and he wants to know, how would you describe that queendom visually? Oh, uh, mm. I I think it would look a lot like Rivendell <laughs> from <laughs> Lord of the Rings. That's where you know the the uh, fairies live. I wouldn't mind living there. <laughs> nice. Mm -hmm. uh, we just had a little look at the video, and we've got this fabulous. Uh, this is the single artwork. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. um, you're obviously a very visual artist you know we've, you've mm -hmm. got a very distinct look you've got a very distinct look in your videos and your artwork and things when you're making music is that something you're thinking about as well or is that something that comes later everything is very uh, connected yeah i know immediately what kind of colors is connected to a song and the melody you know you you see most things in colors and emotion has a color and you know a, a lyric and and everything for me at least um so it's very instant everything um, the hard part is is to make it into the truth, or like to to make a true interpretation of your own imagination, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and kind of get it out there beyond my own body, if that makes sense. No, That's absolutely. The um, but it's really fun, and I'm just really into. I'm really um, curious, and I want to try everything. Um, in you terms know. of like your visuals and your music videos and your style as well, who are your kind of big influences? Who are the people that you? I don't really um, like. I don't know. I I I think, of course, I get influenced by everything I see. It yeah. can be just people I see on the street. Oh, that there, there's me. <laughs> um, it's just people I see on the street. Um, music I hear, and food you eat, and you know, traveling, seeing different how how the culture is and i love old traditional things like how we dress like uh, you know the, the vikings and the warriors and also a lot of african culture i think is beautiful in you know in all the sides of it the uh, the music and the you yeah, know yeah. and and also quite i'm quite into japanese and chinese kind of traditional um clothing so it's just like I don't know, I like what I like, and it can change a lot from a day. Like I said earlier that I hate pink, and I'm wearing <laughs> pink today. <laughs> so I don't know, it, um, I'm very inspired by how I feel on the inside. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, it's important not to limit yourself, isn't it, in terms mm. of like, oh, I don't like pink, so I can't ever wear pink again. No. Yeah. No, I, if I change my mind, I will wear pink. <laughs> well, uh, I'm glad you did, because those are some cracking trainers you got on Aurora. If I yeah, the one so. I have on the video, they got poop in them, so I have had to wear these. <laughs> no, no questions. <laughs> <laughs> um, can we just chat a little bit more about Queendom? Because you yeah. said you wrote it um, for the fans. How has the reaction been? Did it have the reaction that you wanted when uh, it, it finally got out there into the world? Yes, definitely. And it's, it's very um, exciting, because, you know, I don't like... I don't like dividing people because, you know, we are very similar. Yeah. But it has kind of made a clear a division in, in my fans also. And also in the, you know, the, the, the um, difference between my fans and also the rest of the world. And I, and I think sometimes people don't understand me that well or understand the music or the, you know, the, the hands and why, or what, you know. And... Um, but it's, it's been very nice to see, it's very nice to challenge people a bit more. Mm -hmm. And I've, I, I've always said a lot of things in, you know, in, in my music, but now I'm being a bit more direct. So it's easier to get like a first impression in, okay, that's what the song is about. But if you listen and you'll know and you'll see into it, you'll know that it's about much more than what it seems you know, mm -hmm. with the first meeting. 
Um, so it's exciting to see the people who really dive into it and to see that they find more, they find many different things and beauty. And you see the other people that, you know, I think are a bit more lazy, that doesn't really dive into music. They, they just see the first. Yeah, first top layer. But that's also, you know, we need both. And I think um, I've had kind of 50-50 mixed kind of people who said, oh, feminism, you're a left side puppet or whatever. They, you know, like, oh, really? Yeah. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> That's my best impression of them. It's pretty spot on, <laughs> to be honest, if you're all right. You know, but it's, um, I like that it's challenging people a bit more. Mm -hmm. It's boring if, it's, if everyone loves it. And, I'm re and I love you guys who, who love it. That's brilliant. Well, I mean, that's what it's all about, isn't it? It's about connecting with the people who need to feel that way. Because, I mean, you mentioned the, the opening line of the song. It's about the underdogs and the quiet mm. ones. Yeah, the introverts. You yeah. Know, I'm an introvert. Uh -huh. And the world is not created for introverts. Because when uh, people are really external and, and out there, people say, oh, I like that guy. He's really out there. Yeah. And then they say, you know, but she's a bit strange. She was quiet the whole time. And that's, you know, that... Now, I'm a bit better at talking to people because mm -hmm. I've met five billion people yes. in the last four years. You're, so you're well practiced now. Yes, I know how to, you know, do that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I didn't before. And I didn't really care about people before. Mm -hmm. I didn't like people. Because <laughs> it was just like I didn't, I had my, uh, my, myself and my, my forest. And, but now it's my, my world is much bigger before um let's talk about let's go right back to the beginning because obviously you're still very young you're mm. 21 yes yeah <laughs> that is correct isn't it yes uh you're 21 um which you started out really really young was performing and singing something that you always had an interest in even when you were a child not performing oh really no i i didn't perform before i was 16 i think after my management found me and said you want to become an artist? And I said, no. <laughs> <laughs> but then I changed my mind because of my, my mother. She said that I should, I should share what I have in here with, with people. Um, but I didn't really have the need to p perform. I just like to write because it made me feel divine. <laughs> So uh, you said you weren't really interested in performing at first. How did you um, how did you tackle that? Because obviously, performing is quite a daunting thing for even like the most confident of people. How long did it take you to kind of find your to find the get into the swing of it? I guess <laughs> it took, I think, um, o over a hundred shows before I even liked performing. Oh wow! It took quite a long time. That's a for long me. time. So, how were you when you were kind of in before these hundred shows? What was your attitude then? Were you? I was just really like, oh, really like, do I have to do this for the rest of my life? <laughs> and I, I, I was quite like, oh, this is like the the, the bad side of my work. Yeah. I get to make music and I get to meet people, but I have to perform. But that was kind of like the oh part of, of my of my job or a hobby. But now I love it. So what changed? How did you? What clicked for you? Um, I just realized that you know the, the the shows aren't really about me. It's about the emotion that is created between me and the audience. So it's not directly about me. I'm just kind of a vessel for the emotion that you know. And people cry and they have their own stuff. You know, they're they're in their own movie, and that just made me. It was actually meeting my fans that made it easier for me to play. Because through you and through them, I realized that oh, it's much bigger than me. And then I got less nervous. So it, it, it helped. Like, you, you helped me <laughs> through that. I suppose in a way as well, it's like the fans are contributing by being a part of it. You know, it's, oh, not, yeah. it's not just you standing on a stage and everybody else has stood quietly watching you it's like yeah, everybody's and, involved and we uh, communicate a lot like on the we you know i hear them say something from the crowd and i say what what did you say <laughs> oh, it's, your, it's your birthday that's very nice what's your name and it's very like uh, communicative it's like a, a, like a dialogue yeah 
Yes, and it's nice. It's just like, I, I feel like we're friends. So it's much easier to, to do things <laughs> because it's, it's just like being with friends. Well, on that note, we do actually have some more fan questions. Ooh. So Camila Moonmixer on Twitter, hello, asks, what are the main things that, that your new album is inspired by? Um, I, th the new album is very inspired by kind of the first was a bit more n narrow, you know. I have the the the, the little moth on the c cover, yeah. the small things, and and it was about like emotions that I I had felt through, you know, the age of nine and uh, until then, and also you know um, a bit more n n narrow, I guess, about people and about you know dealing with their own demons and and stuff like that. But this album is just a bit more wide the perspective is a bit wider mm -hmm. um, it's kind of like I'm just taking a step back from the world and myself yeah so it's just a, you know it's a bit the the arms of this album kind of stretches longer if that makes sense I think that's often the case with artists is that the yeah. first album will be about you and about your experiences mm. and your things that you want to get across mm. and then you'll go through the, the touring period and the promotion period. Yeah. And like you've mentioned, meeting fans and finding out the impact you've had. And then it's like, okay, what do I want to say on their behalf? Yeah. And it's just a bit more like I'm, I'm using my position a bit more yeah. in, in this era, era um, <laughs> <laughs> than before. Because I, I realized that, you know, I, people are actually listening. So I should... So it's a bit more concrete what I am uh, trying to say than yeah. on the last one because I was quite, you know, metaphoric and I still am, but it's quite like the first layer of each song says a bit more than before, if that mm -hmm. makes sense. It's just a bit more. I want to I have even more to say. A, do, a you kind of of, do you kind of? I was going to do you kind of see yourself as a voice for your fans in a way, like the things that they are concerned about and the things that they're going through. Um, I think they're v like uh, uh, voices of of their own, because when I see you know the the meanings and you know they they inspire me a lot, mm -hmm. and when I see j just them crying or um, during a show or closing their eyes, and when I feel the hug, it's just um, they're very much you know they're, they're all warriors, because I've I've he I've heard about things. M many of them are dealing with and have dealt with and it's still about like th the next album is very emotional it's about human emotions and it's a bit a political it's about sensuality it's about horrible things that we do sometimes there are a few songs which are quite sad dark <laughs> <laughs> which is kind of episode two of previous very dark songs guess you can figure it out. Um, so yeah, it's actually quite interesting because I'm continuing some of the stories I started on my first album. And I'm continuing on a few of them on this. That is interesting. Um, before we go, I've got a couple more fan questions. Um, Mava on Facebook ah, um, <laughs> says, I don't even know what to ask. So hey, Aurora, love you. Oh, hello, Mava. There you are, Mava. You owe me a call <laughs> for getting that message across, <laughs> mate. <laughs> and um, Anna on Twitter asks, who were the first artists that inspired you when you were growing up? Um, actually, um, <laughs> Bob Dylan and Leonard Cohen. Just because, we, you know, I didn't have, we didn't have a radio we didn't have like TV. I didn't watch TV. I didn't. We didn't. I didn't get much from the, the outer world. We had the LPs or the this records, yeah, thing, record, and the record player. You know, so I didn't really have a lot of inputs. And on school, I remember I was the only one who never knew who anyone was. Like who's, <laughs> you know, I I knew who Beyonce was like four years ago. Yeah, because I I didn't. Um, I didn't know anything about anything. So I, I had the records that I had when I w in, in my house. And that was the artists I, I, I listened to, which is Bob Dylan, yeah. Cohen, and Anya. 
Amazing. What a trio. <laughs> um, so now that you're obviously in the music industry, have you found that you're discovering more artists that you like now that obviously it's a much more big part of your life and your career? Um, I do discover artists based on personalities the most. Like, I meet them backstage on a festival. Okay. And I say, okay, who, who are you? And I, 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 I search them up afterwards. Um, if I feel like they were an interesting person, because it often reflects in the music, and sometimes not, of course, mm -hmm. which can, which is cool. Um, but I, I don't have Spotify or iTunes, so I don't know. I, I, it's hard for me to find new music, mm -hmm. which is really bad. I should enjoy. But it's, it's good mm -hmm. in a way in that you're not kind of being swayed either way. It means that you can focus more on your own music rather than going, oh, that person's done that, so I'm going to try that. Or uh, Yeah, it's just like I don't... I have so much music in my head all the time, yeah. you know, and I just think about things because I'm always, like, constantly... I'm w working on at least four, four songs, you know, and I have certain parts of every song ready, but, you know, I'm kind of always working on stuff in my, in my head. Yeah. So it's really hard. I never listen to music almost. If I do, I still listen to Enya. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good. It's relaxing. Yeah, it is. She's an angel. <laughs> Before we uh, wrap up, let me ask you, what would you like to have achieved this time in 12 months? Because obviously, you've packed a lot into 21 years, but in a year's time, where would you like to be? What would you like to have done? Um, I'm, very, uh, I'm a very curious human. So I'm very... Um, I hope I get to explore... Um, a lot of different things, both v v visually, mm -hmm. and you know, I'm I'm very excited to kind of d develop my live shows a bit more. Um, I don't know. I I'm very happy where I am. I don't need to be anywhere else. I hope I'll get to naked swim many times this year. Nice. <laughs> well, on that note. <laughs> Aurora, it's been lovely talking to you. Um, Aurora, obviously, Queendom is out now, so download that, stream that, and Aurora is going to be all over Europe this summer and later this year, so go on her website, aurora-music.com, for all of the dates, and please give it up one more time for the amazing Aurora. Aurora.